Good morning guys, hello. I kind of just woke up. I'm still a little bit sleepy but I'm here to show you how I make my prints. This has been a super requested video for a long time and so I'm here to give it, <laughs> to deliver, so to speak. This video has been requested for a while now and when I tried to do it, when I was thinking of doing it, my printer died and so it always been a little bit put off but now finally I have the Epson printer it's a sure color SCP 900 I believe and if you haven't seen my my video where I unbox it uh, Epson sent me this printer to try out for two months and they're not paying me and they're not sponsoring me they're just allowing me to try this printer and so far I've had it for a little bit over a month and I really like it. It's, pre it's been pretty easy to use. Only once did the colors came out a little bit weird and I cannot fix it for the life of me. So I, I have no idea how to fix that. It was on my sticker sheet. The colors came out rather dull. So I really don't know what happened there. I have to do some more experiments with it. For our work today, we're going to be using this guy, this gal, <laughs> whatever. I had not scanned her yet. So I'm going to scan her, going to clean her up, going to set her up on Photoshop and we're going to print her. That's the plan. If you guys don't remember her, here's a little throwback of when I did her. Welcome back. We are going to scan that baby, we are going to clean it up, I'm going to show you the whole process. It's very simple, honestly. If I can do it, you can do it, honestly. Um, but I hope you enjoy the process and if you have any questions at all that I hopefully can help, leave them down below. I'll be super happy to reply and let's go do the video. So starting with scanning, I'm using a Canon Scan Lead 400 and I've had this scanner for around a year or something. It's fine, it's okay. It was more expensive than I wanted to and sometimes it doesn't connect to my Mac, but it works. <laughs> I go to Photoshop. I'm really sorry it's in Portuguese. I was not able to change the language, but you should have no issue if you go for import images. And I always scan in 600 dpi and usually I just go for PNG as a format. And then it's pretty much just touch up city. I rotate the image and here I point out that I actually burned the paper while I was drawing this with my heat gun. And so before I start doing any cleaning up, I go to levels, colors, and I just try and tweak the dark and the lights. I don't usually tweak a lot of stuff because the scanner can actually pick up the detail pretty well so I just want to make it darker and lighter where it matters and then I just take the selection tool and I just try my best to do a rough selection I don't go very nitty-gritty here because uh, in a few minutes we'll be going to my iPad and so my computer is being a little bit sassy with me that day and it was just being so slow and so I would select something and it would just almost crash <laughs> but yeah I just pretty much do a rough selection here nothing crazy I just want to take the most of the paper texture out and then I just save it to PNG and here I take it to my iPad I used to do this step with Photoshop still but my drawing tablet died or at least it doesn't connect to my new computer now since it's so old and so I have to do this step on my iPad. The reason why I do this is so to take the whole of the paper texture because in some prints for example the paper that I used to print is much brighter than the paper that I used to draw so if I were to print this out it would give a bit of a weird shadow and so I'd rather just remove all that. It can be a bit of an annoying step, but I'd much rather do it than just having that weird shadow. And it's not, it doesn't take that long since I'm doing it with the Apple Pencil. I'm just 
drawing out the white uh, sometimes I use the eraser tool in this case in the middle I went for a mask because if I make a mistake for in this case I can just draw on the thing that I deleted I go and try to correct anything that I see in this drawing luckily I didn't need to correct a lot I didn't have any pencil marks or anything but I did want to correct the moon thing and just add a few more shinies to correct stuff I either use the stamp, pool, stamp tool or I just basically draw on top using the color pick uh, sometimes I enjoy drawing on top just because it's more fun and then yeah I just try and add things that I want in this case I tried filling out stars and I quite enjoyed how they looked rather than they being empty and this stage I just have fun with it I try to add things if I want to if not I don't need to do a lot. This drawing was pretty simple and I liked how it looked already, so I didn't need to do a lot of alterations to it. And then back to Photoshop. <laughs> At this stage, I prep the image for printing. And what that means for me is to make it into A6, basically and divide a sheet. Uh, I found that A6 is the size that works best for me while having it on my shop. Just came with experience and I seeing and me seeing what is more popular and A6 is definitely the size that works best for me. And then in the end I just do a little grid thingy because it really helps me out when cutting the prints. I used to do a lot of mistakes when I just had them like without a grid and this really helped me out in the long run. And now going to my printer, which is, as I mentioned, an Epson SCP-900, uh, kindly sent to me by Epson. And this is the paper that I use. This is a Marot, I believe, uh, 230 GSM archival matte paper. And I've been using this paper for a while now, I think two years already, and love it. It really makes the colors pop, and so it's so good. When it comes to printing, I don't do a lot. I just go to print settings and there I choose the paper, or in this case, the media type. I always go for the paper that it is. In this case, I just go for fine art matte. And in terms of anything else, I go to quality. And max quality here is a bit overkill since this printer is really overkill in that sense. So standard is more than enough. And then I just up the saturation for around 5, just cause. <laughs> a really cool feature of this printer is that it has this little window and I really enjoy seeing the printer do its thing and see the print just coming together. I really enjoy it, so here's a little process of it. <laughs> And just that, the print is done. Now all that's left is cutting. I usually use a uh, X-Acto blade and a ruler. I got this recently at my local drugstore. And it's just like a paper cutting, a paper trimmer, I think that's what you call it. It's fine, I'm actually still learning how to work with it because it's not super intuitive where the line is going to be. But it works just fine using an X-Acto blade and a ruler. It's pretty much the same. And I quite enjoy it, but I am a bit of a mishap so this kind of helps me not doing crazy weird lines i got this paper corner thingy a few weeks ago and it's something that i always wanted to get and i also decided that the prints should be a bit shorter more square ish and so i went back to it doing it a bit by eye i'm not super strict when it comes to cutting i should be but i don't really <laughs> i'm not the best at it and so yeah i'm just rounding out the corners because i think it looks adorable and i've been doing it on my patreon prints ever since i got this and i, I just think it looks so cute i just love it this is one of my favorite purchases ever <laughs> And here they are. Do the process is really, really simple. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to 
give way to Outrobia, let's call it, let's call her that, Outrobia. Yeah, Outrobia, lead the way. Hello. This is not me just five seconds after filming the first clip that you saw. Definitely not. I'm just here to say thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it and that you felt like you learned anything. I tried to make it as educational as I could because honestly, I don't really feel... I don't really know what I'm doing myself. I am just learning on the job and learning as I go. So if any of my experience can help you, that's great. But again, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will always love your comments and I just want to say thank you to... I have been getting some really nice comments lately and they made me all giddy <laughs> and I'm still a bit um, <laughs> not used to getting a lot of support here on YouTube because I'm a teeny teeny tiny channel that anyone that barely anyone watches but when I get comments saying that I really like your work and I really like your videos it gives me motivation so thank you it really I really appreciate it so yeah, I'm thinking of doing the print that we did today, maybe my Patreon print, since I already have it. Maybe I ask my Patreons, let's see what they said. And so if yes, I have to come up with a sticker for it, hopefully I'll come up with something cute. And this is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, for being here, and honestly for just being so sweet about your support. If you want to find me anywhere else, you can find me on Instagram, Patreon, TikTok, Skillshare, and all that good stuff. All my links are down below in the description. I hope this video was good and <laughs> that you enjoyed it. So thank you so much for making it to the end. You're a big star. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Can you tell I don't know how to end the video? Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you soon.